Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to film an altar tour. I absolutely love watching other people's altar tours and for some reason I have not done one yet. So I am gonna flip the camera around in the other direction and jump right into it. Okay, so firstly here, I'm gonna do a little bit of a wide shot. So this is the full altar. You can hear my dog sniffing in the background. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is the full altar setup. So right above me are my windows. I do have it shut so you guys can't see the apartment complex. But um, yeah, this is the full altar. I've got my exercise bike <laughs> over to the side there. Please ignore that. And I should mention, so that is actually a shoe rack that I have painted with acrylic paint, which, spoiler alert, not designed to be furniture paint um but i have kind of customized it so that it is a little bit of a more aesthetically pleasing color or a color that i prefer i'm seated now at about the level that i am when i'm meditating so this is what i see um when i'm actually at the altar i've got underneath a fair bit of storage for just a couple of spellcraft related items my puppy's over here say hi peter Oh, oh, hi, are you itchy? And we've got a pipsqueak, hi, oh my goodness, okay. Um, so yes, this is the like spell craft area situation. Obviously I've got my tarot deck, I've got a variety of oracle cards spread out. Actually, let me go ahead and take those down so you can actually see what is going on behind them. So we've got over here, we've got just like more decorative items, like a, a crystal ball that I got from, <laughs> Peter wants to say hi. Okay. I got a crystal ball situation that I bought from Michael's at their Halloween display. Same thing with this. I... I don't know if, you know, you guys are going to find this cheesy or what, but I love using Halloween decorations as a part of my permanent altar. Like, I, I know it's kind of, like, again, cheesy and, like, this is a sacred space, but I genuinely love it. So we've got that. We've got my spellcraft candle here. You can see I have spilt wax on the wall. Don't mind that. And then I've got some crystals over here as well. And then this is my central Morrigan setup. Um, I don't know who the artist is on this picture, so please forgive me. I have searched everywhere. I originally found it on Facebook, and I've been looking for the original artist ever since because, of course, I did not bookmark it after I printed it off. So if you know who the original artist on that is, please, please let me know. I'm very curious to find out. And you can see next to her, I've got two black pillar candles as my spell candles. And then this is kind of cool. This is my um, like ritual offering. I, I give the Morrigan whiskey on every new moon. Um, and this is like the, the little shot glass that I keep it in. So that's, I, I like it. It's a, it's a skull. It's a cool setup. And I've got a couple of crystal skulls next to her. And then I've also got some grave dirt. I've got a couple of things, a sigil in my cauldron, um, that blessed little container dish situation. You want to destroy your liver? Um, Take a shot every time I say the word situation in this video. Is uh, I've got an active spell going in there, and also it just serves as my general prosperity bowl. Then I've got another Halloween decoration, and then this is my favorite component, and I actually spray painted over it. So this is a statue of the Morrigan, and it's my favorite because this is the only statue that I could find that did not hypersexualize her. Like, I don't know if you guys have also experienced this, but like every statue of the Morrigan is just a hypersexualized woman. And in this one, she's, you know, she's very muscular. She's in battle. Like she just looks like the Morrigan, in my opinion. And it came in like a brushed metallic situation. And I spray painted it this like white spackle color because I just thought that the details popped just so much better. And then next to her, I just have like a little fake flower situation. And then on this side, 
I've got my little amethyst tree um, that I use. So I use this as a manifestation portal. So you can see under the tree, I've got a written note of things to manifest. Um, and then every, I just reactivate that on every new moon. Pip, get out. That's not your stuff, buddy. Goodbye. Yeah, I have a bow flex behind me also. Don't mind that. Um, I should mention, I am I'm in my spare bedroom and my husband has just given me free reign of this room. Like everything in here is mine. And I feel bad about that, but also he's kind of just like, she's a witch, so I'm just gonna leave her alone. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he's like, yeah, we'll let you have that room for all your witchy stuff. Um, so next to my amethyst tree, I've got my protection salts and my moon water, and then also my mortar and pestle. And next to that, so this is a wedding gift from my parents, and it is Native American. It was purchased up north Michigan in the Petoskey area from a local shop where this is actually handmade by a Native artist. Um, and this particular piece of pottery is specifically for marriages. So it's used very commonly. Both parties will drink out of each side of the spout, and it's supposed to, um, you know, just bless the relationship and bind the two together. Um, next to that, I've got another piece of knot magic. And then on the far left side, I've got a little um, piece of lava stone from Colorado. And then behind that, I have a crow feather. And I actually found that crow feather while I was out for a hike up north. And I have this policy that if I see a crow feather, I pick it up, like no matter where I am, no matter how inconvenient it is. And I carried that thing for like five miles dripping in sweat just so like it, it was gross by the time I got back I had to wash it it was a whole process but um yeah I have a policy that if the Morrigan gives me a crow feather I take it with me yeah so um that is my altar I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this if you have like dogs or cats or anything but when I'm sitting here doing spellcraft, especially Pete is just all over me. Like he will not leave me alone. I used to get frustrated and, you know, be like, okay, go away, get in your crate, like go do something. And I've since come to realize like that's them helping me in my spellcraft. Like they're assisting in the energies and like they're being a sort of familiar in that situation. And um, now I love when they join me in the altar room. I absolutely love having my boys around me while I'm doing spellcraft. And you know what? I think I might actually start filming some videos here. Obviously, my lighting is a little strange because the you can't see it, but the ring light is way up there. Uh, so I need to bring that down. But I like this setup. Um, the altar is pretty behind me. So let me know if you guys like this filming setup. Um, I've been really into my husband's desk because it just feels very like cozy and kind of official. But I like this setup too. So... Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my altar tour. I do keep things fairly simple and I do also change it up for the seasons. Um, and I also like to make things uh, kind of aesthetically pleasing. I, I really enjoy interior decorating and just, you know, taking something that comes in like a standard black or white color and like customizing it. It's just fun for me. Um, so I do want to make a whole video discussing aesthetic witchcraft because I do feel like in, in certain regards there's this pressure to have your spellcraft and your altar and things you know be very aesthetic and you know you're in your pr a pretty dress and you look witchy and you're doing things and like everything's cute and so much of my spellcraft my witchcraft is not aesthetic and it's it's chaotic and like I look a mess the whole process during is a mess and it's fun, like I like getting messy, but I definitely do feel sometimes a pressure to to make everything aesthetic so that, you know, if someone was filming me or watching that my spellcraft would look good. And it's just not, it's not really practical and it's not really how magic functions. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Again, my altar is pretty, like for most witches, my altar is like a little frou-frou, you know, a little bit. Not everything has a purpose. There's a lot of stuff on here that's just decorative that I enjoy. It's pretty. Um, everything is a cohesive kind of color scheme. 
And I know that's not for everyone. That's totally fine. Like you don't have to have a whole room dedicated to your altar like I do. Obviously, <laughs> this room is not all dedicated. I don't know if the bow flex behind me gave that away, but this is not just a witchcraft <laughs> room by any means. And, um, but still, I'm very fortunate to have this. Like this windowsill is perfect for my altar situation and that little my little uh shoe situation like little shoe stand was perfect also so um it's fun like I I love this setup and I'm so lucky so thankful to my husband for giving me this setup and allowing me to take over our spare bedroom for my witchcraft yeah uh that's it I hope you guys enjoyed this video drop a comment down below let me know what your altar looks like what your relationship with your altar is I know a lot of witches will have like smaller altars throughout their room and I think that's also super awesome my dream one day is to have like a nice sized backyard where I can have like an outdoor altar like a little grotto situation oh my inner catholic school girl is just i want a grotto i want a morgan grotto <laughs> um but yeah that's it guys that is all i have thank you so much for tuning in and i will catch you in the next one